Hello class, I'm Dominic Meadows Wilcox and I'm going to go over property and public order crime with you today. It's chapter 14 in the Bartle and Bartle text if any of you would like to follow along. What are property crimes? According to the Bartle and Bartle text, property crimes are gen generally involve the illegal acquisition of money and material goods or the illegal destruction of property for financial gain. The four major property crimes are all part one. They are larceny, burglary, arson, and motor vehicle theft. Public order crimes. These are actions against public or moral decency or other conduct that is interpreted as a threat to the orderly operations of a given society. Examples include prostitution, gambling, vagrancy, disorderly conduct, public drunkenness, and drug use. You might ask yourself what these crimes have in common. The reason that they're all lumped together in Chapter 14 is each of these crimes are different from all of the other types of criminal behavior we've read about during the semester. They are essentially committed for economic reasons and for the most part maintain a lack of physical aggression or violence against people. Why are these crimes committed? According to the Bartle and Bartle text, most people engage in economic and property crime for the money or for other tangible rewards that meet biological, psychological, or social needs. With that being said, it's safe to assume many offenders of these crimes are making an attempt to supplement their income or improve their quality of life. Another possibility could be relative deprivation. This is about the haves and the have-nots. It can be defined as a pervasive sense of injustice that develops between the haves and have-nots. For example, you have something of value, I believe I deserve it, so I decide to take it from you somehow. Regardless of how much or how little I already have, I want what you have. This is the haves and the have-nots or relative deprivation. Another possibility could be the offender finding motivation and justification through self-reinforcement, including self-rewards and self-punishment. The offender may receive pleasure and self-satisfaction in the completion of a crime and from doing it well. For example, I'm so good at carjacking people, they never see me coming and they never fight back or I'm so good at shoplifting, I've never been caught. Personally, I believe the motivation for committing these crimes can come from any combination of these factors. Let's take a closer look at these property and public order crimes. Burglary is the unlawful entry of a structure with or without force with intent to commit a felony or theft. Burglars are typically very young. 60% of those arrested in 2007 were under the age of 25. Most of them did not travel far from their own homes to do the break-ins. As they continue to burglarize, they seem to be comfortable going a farther distance. Two-thirds of all burglaries are residential and occur on weekdays. One-third are commercial establishments and occur after hours or on the weekends. For the victims of burglaries, it can be psychologically da damaging and lead them to feel violated whether or not they were present during the act. They usually are not present during the crime. Less than half of all burglars work in groups. Most people who have been arrested for burglary have been male. In residential burglaries, 
males are more likely than females to steal a car from the garage. In the 1991 mm -hmm. Cromwell study, burglars said they fixed or got high before entering a residence. These burglars reported moderate amounts of alcohol or drugs simply made them better burglars. Because these substances increased their alertness, vigilance, and improved their nerve to stay in the residence long enough to search for and locate a variety of items to steal. Amazingly, it was found that heroin users seemed to exercise the greatest amount of discretion in their drug use leading up to a burglary. Larceny is the unlawful taking, carrying, leading, or riding away of property from the possession or constructive possession of another. Charges of larceny may apply when there is a theft of property left outdoors bicycles, pedigree dogs, lawn mowers, or when a person goes pickpocketing, purse snatching, or shoplifting. Motor vehicle theft is the theft or attempted theft of a motor vehicle. Charges of motor vehicle theft may apply when the property is an automobile, truck, bus, motorcycle, motor scooter, or snowmobile. If the theft is by force or by threat of force, it would be considered a carjacking. Fraud is the misrepresentation of facts and the deliberate intent to deceive with the promise of goods, services, or other benefits that either do not exist or were never intended to be provided. For example, elder financial abuse, counterfeiting, and mail fraud. Identity theft is a type of fraud. It occurs when one individual or a group of individuals misappropriate another person's personal identification information. They may open up credit cards with the individual's information, finance a car, or even take out a second mortgage in the person's name and make off with that money. Softlifting is the illegal duplication of copyrighted software by individuals for personal use. This may also be referred to as piracy. Commercial piracy occurs when the duplication is up for resale. Corporate piracy occurs when the duplication is used throughout a corporation, agency, or organization. Green's Occupational Crime Typology. This is a representation of the chart number 14-3 on page 432 in the Bartle and Bartle text. Organizational is law violating behavior promoted by the corporation or agency. An example of this would be falsifying company tax records. Professional would be law violating behavior committed as a result of being in a profession that offers the opportunity for crime. For example, a doctor committing Medicaid, Medicaid fraud. State authority be a law violating behavior by those in government. An example of state authority would be bribe, a bribe taken by a public official. Individual will be law-violating behavior committed by an individual working for a company or organization but committed for his or her own advancement or financial gain, such as stealing a stapler or clothing from work. White-collar crime are acts committed by salaried employees in which their place of employment is either the victim or the locale for the commission of an illegal act from which they personally benefit, such as embezzlement. Blue collar crime is the whole array of illegal acts committed by non-salaried workers against their place of employment. An example of that could be stealing tools or products from your job. 
often dissatis dissatisfaction with the job or working condition plays a part in, bl in blue collar crime. The employee may feel a sense of entitlement or believe that some things are up for grabs and some things aren't acceptable to steal. Let's say I might steal a box of tissue from my job but I wouldn't take the printer. Sex trafficking. Is human trafficking when the commodities involved in this illicit worldwide trade are women, children, and men, and the criminal activity is usually sex-related and is committed for long-term exploitation for high profits? Mm -hmm. Examples include women who agree to come to this country as food service workers, hotel employees or dancers, but then are forced into prostitution until they are able to pay off the debt incurred through a smuggling fee. Let's say I'm charging you $10,000 to smuggle you into the country. For you to work it off, you have to earn me $100,000. By the time you earn that amount of money, if you ever do, you have undergone severe emotional and and physical abuse more than likely and those scars will never go away. Sex trafficking can occur domestically or internationally. The U.S. is one of the top three destinations for international sex trafficking. Prostitution is defined as the offering, agreement to offer, or provision of sexual relations and return for tangible rewards or special favors. Street walkers and call girls are not the only types of sex workers. Stag party workers, some masseuses, conventioneers, bar girls, brothel girls, circuit travelers, and rep booth girls may also work as prostitutes. Conservative estimates suggest that prostitution is the primary source of personal income for at least one million women and girls in the United States. Prostitutes appear to come from many different walks of life, possess varied educational and family backgrounds, demonstrate a wide range of personality types, and express a great variety of motives. Of those arrested for prostitution, two-thirds are female and one-third are male. Nevada is the only U.S. state that has not outlawed prostitution, and even in Nevada, prostitution is only legal in counties that have a population of less than 200,000 people. Only 20% of prostitutes seem to have been lured lured in by madams or pimps, and they are not necessarily the feeble-minded, unloved, oversexed representations we often hear about. Many do come from intact homes and are well-educated. This leads me to my real-world example. I have a video clip that I'd like to share and wondering if the name Natalie Dillon rings a bell for anyone.
is going to option her virginity on the net. Repeat, a 22-year-old California woman is going to option her virginity on the net. A woman calling herself Natalie Dillon from San Diego, California, will be offering her virginity up on the net. It will be sold to the highest bidder in an online auction. The auction is being sponsored through MoneyRanch.com, the home of the Moonlight Money Ranch in Nevada. Says 22-year-old Natalie Dillon, we live in a capitalist society. Why shouldn't I be allowed to capitalize on my virginity? And I have another video I'd like to share where Natalie Dillon explains the circumstances around this prostitution. It's a story that's making headlines from the U.S. to England, India, Australia, all over the world. A 22-year-old woman named Natalie is auctioning off her virginity. Yes. So far, Natalie has gotten bids from more than 5,000 men, including doctors, financiers, professors, and even a couple of famous guys. And some of the bids to be with Natalie are over $1 million. $1 million. So this is Natalie, and this is her sister, Avia. So why would you want to sell your virginity? Um, my sister and I, we are going to go into her master's. And we're going to finish our research for thesis project. And we wanted to, uh, to study the dichotomous nature between virginity and prostitution. And there's really been so few case studies of it. Between so, virginity and prostitution. The dichotomous nature, yeah. broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, I stumbled upon this article of a Peruvian woman who wanted to sell her virginity. And she was offered an exorbitant amount of cash. And so, um, is this how much was the Peruvian woman offered? Um, I believe it was 1.5 million dollars. Like, yes. Okay, but she's 22 years old, so a lot of people would say, you're not a virgin, you're 22. Right, but that's because look, look how you look. I mean, you look like a virgin. You're tired. <laughs> you do. I mean, you don't look like a virgin. Not that there is a stereotype. I guess there is a stereotype, but I'll keep it real. You know, and but, yeah, there is a stereotype. Yeah, you know, hopefully I'll alleviate some of that, but you know, it's far from the truth. Okay, so you decided to do this from this Peruvian woman, this idea. Uh -huh. Um, What's been the response from people? Um, you know, honestly, I try to stay away from all the message words. I know there's a lot of negativity out there. Um, but, you know, I've also seen polls where 50-50. 50-50? Uh, yeah, there's been a lot yeah, of people, people, people are, agree yeah. that it's okay. okay. In favor, right. How, what about our audience here? Let's do a poll of our audience. What percentage of you guys think that it's okay for Natalie to auction off her virginity? Raise your hand high. I think there's one, two, three, four, four people. Oh, where's the 50% that you're finding? <laughs> what what are you I mean, there's a lot of international fans, yeah. so. Okay, you say that you don't read the, the negative stuff, but you have to have seen it in the beginning to stop yourself. Oh, no, I, know. I do see a lot of negative so what things. what did I say? It's in the message for us. Um, what are the negative things that, oh, you know, all sorts of explicit things that, you know, I'm not going to lower myself in my teeth. Yeah. Oh, like that you are a, 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 a this and a that. Right, and exactly. She's feeling that she's a virgin. Right. I guess they're like you're uh, in the making, probably, is what they're talking about. Absolutely. So, what I would think, because when I heard this, I immediately thought, this is illegal because it's prostitution. Right. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And isn't it? It's prostitution. Yeah, absolutely. Right. For money. Uh -huh. Yes. So, you're going to go to jail if you do this. Um, you know, see, that's where I contacted uh, Mr. Haas of the Bunny Ranch, mm -hmm. and um, that's the only legal way to do it. And I've seen a lot of articles where uh, they say I approached eBay, which is absolutely false. I went straight to Dennis because I wanted to do this absolutely in a legal manner. In a legal manner. You're not a frick. Okay, so that was the last video.
that completes my presentation on property and public order crime. I hope you found it to be both enjoyable and informative. On the following slides, I have some questions that may help to initiate a class discussion. Please spend as much or as little time on each as you would like. I'll go through them briefly for you. Would anyone like to discuss their ideas around the example of Natalie Dillon and her master's thesis project? Have you ever witnessed the solicitation of a prostitute? Would anyone care to discuss their own experience with any property or public order crime? What do you think motivates people to commit these crimes? Can anyone remember the categories in Green's occupational crime typology? Do victimless crimes actually exist? Have you ever been a victim of a corporate crime? Have you ever been a victim of identity theft? 